talking with you more about the industry and, and all that. But today I really want to share with you a personal story. It's about myself. It's not glorious, it's a bit shameful. But actually I want you to avoid making the same mistake. Now let me ask you first, how many of you are already decided what you want to do in life as a career? Already, already decided. Okay, good. good. All right. And he said, mechanical engineering. And then I said, oh, that's a cool major. All these mechanical devices. Uh, British Columbia, UBC, was a part general studies. More math, more physics. Even in ventilation and air conditioning. Um, I'm still with the same company. What you're chosen to do. You need to listen to some of the company. Now, um, so the workshops really help people to understand about the career in development and 3D animation in companies in the area. Today, it became the biggest uh, game industry hub in the United States. If you have a message in your mind, there's only one thing I wanted you to remember, to research the field that you want to go into, so that you can enjoy it for the rest of your life. Okay, now, long time ago, Nintendo was the main player in games. And one, of course, Tetris. <laughs> and Donkey Kong, and I also worked for, the, for other companies through Nintendo, like Namco and uh, Capcom. The main idea is to follow your passion. Why passion? What I'm going to talk to you today, it's about how I spend the typical day in game development with producers so I can tell you the whole spectrum of what it is to be a game developer or a simulation engineer. Why? So far your life has been changing every couple of years from junior school to high school etc. But let me tell you something. Once you pick a field to study for your higher for your higher studies and you earn that degree, your life is going to be monotonous, usually till the age of 65. So you better pick a field not only you like, you love. Today, after 25 years in the simulation industry, if someone bring me back 25 years back in time and ask me what would you like to do again if you have the choice I would pick computer science and I would pick simulation again and again and again Start inside and within your brain I'm not saying logical according to our rules but logical like Mario can be flying upside down in, uh, in a special galaxy that is controlled by Bowser as long as we made sure to tell you the entire stories and you can believe it. This is it. That becomes logical. So, creating the suspension of disbelief is very important. Otherwise, you won't play the game. I can give you an example. Sometimes I see our students too much into a game. So once I went to a student and they were building that farmer. Oh, you have a high score. Oh yes, I'm within the top 1,000 in, in the entire world. How many hours a day you spend to maintain your farm? He said, about three hours a day. And from time to time I click. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. from time to time. Every five minutes. He <laughs> said, so maybe six. I said, let's go more into the future. Bigger. And then he said, 24. He said, so within a few months, all what you will do is become a slave to that farm. He said, yes, <laughs> and then I said, what are you getting? Suppose you're staying 24 hours just maintaining your farm, what do you get? He said, a high score? <laughs> well, I hate you. He said, said, you killed my fun. 
<laughs> that game said exactly what I wanted to do because you're spending more time on the thing. It's now beyond the fun. So this is, let me tell you, a, not a secret, we know about how do we build element of fun. Some of you, well, it's reality time. You're not kids anymore. Do you know Mario Kart? Yes. It means if you lost, you were only a loser for three minutes. The guy will say, I don't care, I won. So <laughs> never we detect that the small sister is not winning, because usually the nice small sister is playing with us, is not winning, we count. How many she lost? One. relationships with other companies. I'm happy to say, I'm, I'm really saying it humbly, but uh, this year I was elected as president and I hope, I hope one of you guys will actually be in this program and you, who, say, who knows, you might be standing in my place next year. Yeah. something out of nothing. It's, it's seeing someone who has a dream of becoming a, a, a game developer who can put a product on the shelf. One case, who, one student who was uh, not a child, he was around 30 years old. He was working at Nintendo for about 10 years. He was a manager at Nintendo. But yet, when we opened the school in in the U.S., he decided to quit the job and come to the school. And I was really worried for him. I said, are you sure? You are married with a family. You have to support your family. But yet you want to quit your job and come to school. What if you, what if you don't find a job at the end? Are you sure? And he said, yes, I, I'm sure because this is my passion. I don't want to do anything else except to develop games. So he did. He came. and. He graduated after about two and a half years, and he's actually started working at a very prominent game company. So I was very happy to see that. Yeah. You want to become a doctor, but yet you're really bad at math. And if you don't do anything about it, even no matter how much you want to be a doctor, 
it's going to be very difficult. Uh, you need to carefully decide and ask as much as you can from the people around, around you, the people you know. Because once you take that decision, it's going to remain with you for the rest of your life. Individual level, other than your success in this field, do you have any personal goals you would like to achieve as well? However, I, I consider whatever I do at work as part of my personal goal. Although the company on paper is not mine, but mm -hmm. I consider it mine. Well, it's a challenging question, and I, <laughs> I like challenging questions. Uh, so besides hoping to retire without worrying about money too much uh, as a personal goal, the other uh, important goal is I, I want to look back after I retire that I've done something that made a difference. I also have have a lot of opportunities to work with different countries, different governments of countries, to look at helping them to grow the economy by developing the, you know, an interactive digital media industry. We, uh, I've worked, we have worked with Singapore, we have worked with South Korea, we have worked with Spain, and we're hoping to work with uh, in the, in the, maybe in the Middle East uh, area as well. So. This is a part of, uh, of, the, of the job that gives me a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. So I want, to, I want to have something to, to look back when I retire, that I've done something great. Do you mark to be left on the road? Like everyone would remember you by that particular thing. Passionate and stubborn. <laughs> As a good example to pass along everything we know. Whatever I acquired as knowledge, to pass it all and to make sure to whoever I pass it, they will pass it even with additional knowledge. Today in, 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 my, in my work, although uh, I am the chief operating officer, I can make a lot of decisions, but I need to make sure that I make those decisions that serve every department in the company. And every employee in the company, and every student in the, co in the school. Man mindset. Uh, if, I mean, if the leaders are thinking about making decisions that benefit them only, then you will never create a, a good environment for everybody. Have lunch? <laughs> <laughs> the more that you learn and get experience, the more that you realize that, that you still need to get much more. Yeah. I think we share it the same way. Time is our only enemy. We want to do more, but the day is 24 hours. In the last two years, we've been registering around 450 new students. That's like starting a new school. How long have you have been in uh, DigiPen? Oh, 25 years. Okay. DigiPen in 1996. Yeah, 97. Yeah, uh, uh, December 96. Actually, our motto here was supposed to be uh, I serve. Mm. That's the school's motto, I serve. Yeah, we share, we dare. So we care for each other and then we share and then we dare, of course, to take risks, to innovate, to create. And this is what you've mm. been doing at DigiPen. Lots yes. of innovation yes. and creation. Mm. We really uh, admire Claude's uh, vision. Yeah. It, it gives everyone at DigiPen the freedom to innovate, mm -hmm. not only the students, but the employees as well. It's every aspect of simulation, from computer engineering to computer science, to game design from the science, game design from the art, music from the science, music from the art, to fine arts yes. and digital art. So it's the entire yes. spectrum, and we have yes. bachelors and masters. Exactly. When they ask him about the goals, they say, well, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is me at DigiPen. Mm. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So. And uh, DigiPen is actually in preparing to open a new school mm. oh. in the K to 12 area. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. Mm. Yeah. In Washington. Yes, near mm. where we are in Redmond. Yeah. That's a very good uh, yeah, mm. idea. And we, we, have, we have a very simple objective, is to help people find their passion and have the ability to 
pursue. Yeah. Identify it early enough. Wow. And that's uh, hopefully a school that you describe. People wow. wake up and have to go to kindergarten yeah. to PhD. Yeah.